Hi, I'm Susan Moody, and welcome to this episode of Understanding Stress. Now, we all know what stress is. We all are under stress. And stress is the reaction of what happens when we have too much pressure coming at us physically, emotionally, psychologically. But we're going to understand what it does to the body and some things that you can do proactively to help alleviate stress and manage stress. So again, I'm Susan Moody. I'm a certified natural health practitioner and a retired audiologist. And I welcome you to this episode so that we can learn about what we can do to be healthy, stay healthy. So when we have things coming at us, when things build up, so some of the top things that cause American stress is job and job loss. So with the job, sometimes people are insecure, they have upward pressure, they um, feel trapped or they have conflicts at work, and then job loss, there's that financial insecurity, the indecisions of what's going on, the impact it has on the family, has on self-esteem, self-worth, because we have a lot of identity um, with our job. Some of the other things that cause stress, in fact, finances, finances is probably the number one by the American Psychological Association because money decisions are very stressful. Um, it's part of our biggest insecurity. We have scar scarcity fears and self-worth issues. Some of the signs of financial stress include money worries, maybe you're afraid to pick up the phone, open up the mail, you start arguing with your significant other about money, um, you feel guilty about spending it. So this is, in terms of Americans, um, probably the number one stress. A large one, too, that we hear about is moving, buying and selling a home. There's financial costs. There's loan burdens. There's the uncertainty of where you're going. What's the neighborhood going to be like? There's legal complications in selling a home. What about when you get married? That's another stress. Decisions to make, financial challenges, expectations met, unmet, um, learning to live with somebody, increased responsibilities, lots of pressure, lots of anxiety, lots of stress. Then you have the in-laws. Enough said about the in-laws, right? Then there comes children. Oh my gosh, noisy. Messy, they're very dependent. They start to grow up. They're still noisy, they're still messy. Now they're independent. You have the hormones going hither and yon. There's family complications. A lot of stress, a lot of decisions to be made. Sometimes that gets to people and then divorce happens. The separation, the emotional, psychological trauma, betrayal, heartbreak. Oh my gosh, there's so many stresses. So much to give us anxiety in life. But we still have more. The death of a loved one is a huge stress. Grief is so complicated. There's <sighs> Compassion is required. There's so much going on. There's so many layers of trauma. Um, <sighs> some of the signs of stress. When you have difficulty making decisions, when you have difficulty concentrating, fatigue, headache, stomach issues, mood swings, you can't sleep at night so you have insomnia going on, tight muscles, um, just burnout. Those are all physical complications of stress. Now why does that happen? When we have a stress event, what happens is whether it's real or perceived, our hypothalamus kicks in. It turns off our cortex. It turns off our thinking ability because we need to go into fight, flight, or freeze. So think about a lion and a zebra. The zebra needs to run fast. So when the adrenals, um, our adrenals are 
the glands that sit on top of our kidneys and they create adrenaline. That adrenaline spikes nutrition and oxygen to our muscles. It lets us run like crazy or fight like the dickens or freeze. So in the case of the zebra and the lion, the zebra can run. If the zebra gets trapped, the zebra can fight. But also, all animals have it. So in the case of a rabbit, it's gonna run or it's gonna freeze. And knowing that when we're under stress and the adrenals kick in, we have fight, flight, or freeze. Think about when you take a test or when you're gonna do some public speaking. What happens is if you're taking a test, you can't fight the instructor. You certainly don't wanna run away from the classroom. And so sometimes students will freeze. Basically, their gray matter turns off because there's so much intensity in freezing every muscle so that you stay put. You, in terms of the rabbit's case, the rabbit doesn't want the hawk to notice it. Those muscles are very tense. There's a lot of uh, adrenaline holding those muscles still. So when someone, whether perceived or real threat, so think of a panic attack as a perceived threat, there's no real threat, but the body, the, the adrenal surges. Then what happens, if this is a long-term issue, then cortisol, now those, now those adrenal glands are producing cortisol. The short-term benefit is it floods the brain with sugars, more oxygen. It turns off the digestive system because if you're running for your life, you don't need to be digesting lunch. It turns off your reproductive system because that's certainly not on the table. So long-term stress, now cortisol is released and now we have detriment to the body because long-term effects of cortisol is inflammation and pain. So we're trying to relieve stress, but I have more. What else stresses? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Caring for the elderly. Caring for the elderly. If you have a loved one who's sick, a family member who needs care, the physical and the emotional toll of that 24-7 that becomes a host of physical and emotional problems to the caretaker. Now, we have major illness. Oh my gosh. The Harvard Medical School talks about how our body reacts to major illnesses. Again, we're having issues with earning a living, with function, the uncertainty. <sighs> Just too much to bear. But let's talk about a fun stress, retirement. It's a major life change. There's new identity. It's a fixed income. And what do you do next with your aging body? Well, how do we get rid of all the stress? We need to get rid of it. So let's add some things to our diet that actually can help us get rid of stress. Blueberries is one of my most favorite anti-stress foods. Blueberries are full, full of B vitamins, and they help um, the brain settle down. Oatmeal, a well-known comfort food, it helps keep our blood sugar straight and even, and oatmeal can actually reduce cortisol levels. A high quality dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has magnesium, it helps relax the muscles, and it also takes down cortisol levels. Asparagus, a lot, of, a lot of good vitamins, reducing um, stress. The folate in it is helpful to the bloodstream. Um, it helps carry iron and lower those stresses. Some teas that I brought today, passion flower and chamomile. They reduce stress and anxiety. They're both very calming to the stomach and helps reduce the anxiety. What else could you do? What else could you try? Um, CBD is a great product for getting all 20 amino acids. 
What does that do for us? It helps the brain make and manufacture serotonin and melatonin to calm us down. Um, you can do it as a supplement, as a lotion. A lot of people like essential oils. Lavender is actually a very good one for reducing stress. Ashagandwa is an adaptogen root, well known to help reduce stress. So what happens when you have a situational anxiety, like your in-laws are coming, or you're taking a test? This particular supplement is great for those situational anxiety where your anxiousness is rising, you just need to calm that hypothalamus and take care of it. You can pick these up at any quality health food store. Um, lots of books on stress. Get a counselor, get relaxed, um, do something, sometimes being physical. Um, stress balls, I have two examples of stress balls. Lots of, lots of movement, lots of exercise. What does the Cleveland Clinic tell us? How do we help? What are things we can do other than foods? Exercise regularly. Stop nicotine, stop smoking. It's okay to say no, it's okay to be assertive. Find your happy place. If you have to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Take a walk, take a breath. Um, meditation, mindfulness. So, I'm saying look to yourself, find your happy place. Get rid of those stresses. Go someplace, be, some, be with someone who lets you relax, lets you enjoy yourself, and find that serenity, find that peace. This is Susan Moody, and I am thanking you for joining me today. Be well, stay well, and I'll see you next time. Health and hugs. Bye-bye.